Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? Are you tired of this commercial? <laughs> so am I. Well, these commercials may be old and boring, but the gospel we preach never is. Come study the Bible with the Church of Christ. We're meeting at 250 the Boulevard. Our new times are Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study and 10 a.m. for worship, and then Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Come visit with us. We hope to see you there. I despise, hate, detest, and loathe the Church of Christ and everything about it. I, I hate them. I really do. The better I get to know them, the more I hate them. I, I want to rid the world of the Churches of Christ. See why the atheists don't like the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services are 11 a.m. and Wednesday at 7 p.m. at 823 Starling Avenue. Watch them on TV in Martinsville at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and on Sunday on WGSR. In the Church of Christ, we teach that the Bible teaches that we can intermarry and we, therefore we will intermingle. We'll also have a very diverse future. When I first heard about the Church of Christ and what they were teaching, they made me believe that they were actually teaching the truth. And if you're teaching the truth, there should not be an issue with black or white. So I decided to visit here, and that's when I realized that they are teaching the truth, and black or white, regardless of what your nationality is, is not an issue. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18, and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. Don't flex your muscles. Flex your mind. Watch a word from the Lord. Thursday nights at 9. I did it for science. What power? What power? After losing the debate to the KKK, Michael went to school. Just being a preacher in general is not a job for sissies. Uh, you have to have thick skin. You have to be ready to be uh, scrutinized on all points. Uh, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I believe that they were really trying to help us with, you know, in the school that I was attending was that some of the instructors, they would, you know, they would kind of pick out some guys and they would just be really hard on them for a certain amount of time. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Word from the Lord. James over here with you, and we are starting off by reminding you of the tent meeting. I heard Mark uh, plug it before he went off, and it's going to start Monday at 7 p.m. next to the Eden Mall. We've been there for, I think this is going to be the, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. This, I think, will be the fifth time we've been there. So, uh, you know, friends, it's really be, without excuse if you're not uh, coming out to the tent, the tent meeting uh, there's really no excuse for you for you not to come and examine the, the Church of Christ, examine the Bible that we're teaching. No collections will be taken. We'll be there at 7 p.m. every night starting on September the 16th and going through the 27th. And we'll also be on TV every night. Well, I think there may be an exception of one night in there, but basically we'll be on TV every night as well. So you can tune in on WGSR and, and uh, also get a, another lesson from God's Word as well. So we really want you to know that we are concerned about you and what our lesson is going to be about tonight. We'll demonstrate that. I, I, I hope so. So I hope you're ready for a study from God's Word. We want to give our content information. We meet at 250 the Boulevard. <clears throat> They're in Eden, uh, uh, North Carolina. And if you are in the area, we hope that you will come out and visit with us. Also, uh, you can reach me at 276-340-2653. Or you can uh, email me at a word from the Lord at gmail.com. Of course, in Martinsville, you can assemble with the saints. 823 Starling Avenue in Martinsville, or 120 American Legion in Danville. And uh, they meet on, Martinsville meets on Sundays and Wednesdays. Danville, the brethren there, meet on Sundays and Tuesdays, and we meet on Sundays and Thursdays. So you could come out and visit with us uh, uh, four days a week, you might say, and we'd be glad to, we'd be glad to ha have you in our midst, and we want you to uh, know you'd be our warm and welcome guest. Of course, W. H-I-G-T-V is where uh, What Does the Bible Say is airing out of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. We want you to watch that every opportunity you have on Tuesday nights. So we'd be glad for you to uh, 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 
tune in and, and get some information on how you what you think about that program as well. And it's just showing that we're uh, we believe the gospel is the power to save, and so we want to get out into all the world and to uh, uh, get it to as many lost and dying souls as we can. Friends, uh, in order to start off our tent meeting, I know we, we talked about this uh, uh, Sunday night. We had a special program on Sunday night. And one of the themes or kind of the underlying uh, messages that we're using on our, 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 our meeting this year is really the idea that we are trying to better our society. You know, our society is, is full of, of problems. A lot of people are going through different uh, uh, problems and struggles, and, and there's a lot of issues going on, socially speaking, social issues, that we want to, to discuss. And so if your preacher is someone who believes in, in uh, biblical principles, if he, if he believes the Bible is the, the standard by which we ought to live, if he is... Uh, uh, awful morals and, and uprightness and, and things of this nature, uh, invite him out. Ask the preacher. Ask your preacher to come out and be a part of this panel. Uh, we're going to have a, a table set up every night after the sermon. We'll have, uh, instead of our usual question and answer session, we're going to have any preachers that want to come out, we'll put them on the panel, and then we'll take questions about social issues, uh, drinking, gambling, homosexuality, uh, you know, whatever it may be. This is This is what we're going to do and so we want you to realize that you know we're we're trying to uh, demonstrate that we are willing to to have some discussions and I, I think anybody that has watched this program w with uh, uh, sincerity knows that we will discuss uh, these issues in light of the Bible and so we hope that your your preacher is one of the uh, is like minded in that regard and so we want you to come out and invite your preacher come out and hear the the preachers. Uh, on this panel, and we'll be discussing uh, what uh, uh, the Bible is saying. Get a word from the Lord on these on these matters. Now, friends, here's why we want to do this. You know, a nation. The Bible talks about a nation that is sick needs a remedy. And in Isaiah chapter two, uh, chapter one, Isaiah chapter one, uh, verses two through six. We actually have God talking about a nation that is that is very sick. He's talking about Israel, <clears throat> and this is what he says. He saw a vision uh, of of Isaiah, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Isaiah, Jotham, Ahaz, and and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Now, what was this message that he saw? What was this vision that he saw? Well, notice this. It says, "Hear, O heavens, and give ear." O earth, for the Lord hath spoken, I have nourished and brought, for, brought up children, and yet they have rebelled against me. As the ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib, Israel hath, doth not know, my people doth not consider. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord, they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger, uh, they provoke the Holy One of Israel unto anger, uh, and gone and gone backwards. Then in verse 5, he says, uh, Why should ye be stricken any more? We, uh, ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart is faint. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds... Uh, and bruises and putrefying sores that have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified, neither modified with ointment. So here we have, here we have a picture of Israel being being portrayed as a as a body that is that is sick, full of wounds and bruises, and the the whole head is sick. Friends, if that does not describe the nation in which we live, I don't know what does. It is, it is exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing a nation that is removing itself from God, rebelling against God. And so you have all these social problems. Now, I know that there are some who would say, no, the problem is only going to get better the further you move away from God, the further you move away from the Bible, as if that is going to make things better. But I, I say contrary to the friends. If you just look at the, at the trend you actually have people more and more in our society 
that are moving away from religion. They're tired of religion. We did a program on this not too long ago about the, the, uh, the nuns of religion. People are, are leaving in droves, uh, uh, leaving religion that they were raised up in or whatever. But friends, is society getting better? Is, 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 are, the, are the social problems getting better? Are families staying intact? Are children being cared for more and more now? Are, there, is, are the parents taking the responsibility of raising their children? Are there uh, more husbands who are staying and raising their kids that they, that they uh, bring into this world? Or is the family breaking down? Is society getting better by uh, when you see more and more gun violence or more and more gang violence? When you have uh, uh, more deaths in uh, the city of, of Chicago, you know, more than any other uh, place in the world, the highest crime rates in Chicago, sound, sounds to me like, yeah, society's really booming there, right? We're really, we're really making, making headway here. Is society really getting better? Or is it a sickness? And if society is going to get better, what's going to be the remedy? See, I submit to you that the gospel is the remedy that can not only save man's soul, but also correct the social problems, the social woes. It can take care of, of the, uh, 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 the individuals who find themselves on, uh, on welfare, getting a dole from the government. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. Now, I'm all for individuals who are in desperate need of help getting assistance. I'm all for that. But I am not for individuals who are able-bodied, and yet they say, you know what, I can make a better living or easier living by getting disability from the government. I can scam the system, and then I can get a check for my kids. I can get a check for me, a check for my kids. And then, not only that, then if I, if I uh, have some kind of accident too, then I can... Maybe defraud the insurance company. You know, I'll get a settlement from the insurance company, and I'll go out here, and I'll, I'll still, I'll still play golf, or I'll still bowl, or I'll play baseball, or football, or I'll, you know, I'll just have a life of luxury, based upon the on the fraud that I've committed. Now, is that really getting better? Is that better in society? See, the Bible has principles that will take care of all those things if people would just live by them and adhere by them. And so I submit to you that our society is sick and the solution is going to be found in God's Word. But you know what? There's some people, there's some people who would say, no, you know, we don't need to, uh, uh, we don't need, need the Bible. What we need to do is we need to stay away from, uh, from the, uh, uh, the solution. We don't want the Bible as our medicine. Here, listen to what these people are saying. Listen to what these people are saying. Now, this is a, uh, the first one is going to be a, 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 a grouping of Bob Lawson and Larry Serber. Listen to what they say. Just listen to them talk about the Bible. What does anyone need to know about the Bible other than just to obey the Ten Commandments? What would I need to know? God, why didn't he just give you the Ten Commandments and leave the rest of this out? Well, that, that would make more sense to me if you obey well, the Ten Commandments. Isn't that all you need to do? You just said that you make more sense than God, so we'll just let you live with that, sir. Well, to me, I do. If, if I have to listen to what you're saying, you it's You don't gospel. have to listen to me. We asked you how about this. You said you'd rather have Ten Commandments than this, so you said it makes more sense. So the community just heard you I'm say says hey, that it makes more sense to him just to have the Ten Commandments, and God really wasn't making sense when he gave the whole Bible. Well, most of that other stuff, isn't it, like, confusing? Everybody can read the Bible with all this... Go it's basically big gobbledygook, really, to be honest with you. Well, we see the problem you're having, sir. You can't <laughs> understand the Bible. <laughs> yeah. uh, you're an idiot. Bye. Thank you. I'm a preacher of the truth of science. You have to pump the volume on this one. But if I fed A or Bible thumpers, they pump the Bible into people's heads. If you hear me thumping a Bible, it's because I'm trying to get it down the commode so I can flush it. I think the Bible is evil. I think it's madness. I think it's got crazy stuff, like I said, turning water to wine and making a man out of dust and all the other things there that people are brainwashed to believe. The Bible itself is nothing but lies, rubbish, childish fairy tales, and nonsense. All right. People okay. around here could wake up. All right, so the Bible is childish, full of silly stories and and uh, gobbledygook. This is this is what the atheists, the agnostics, this is what they say. People that 
say there is no God, well, they don't really know that there's no God. They can't really know that there's no God. So, you know, they just highly suspect there's no God, maybe. And so they don't want to hear anything from the Bible. The Bible is, is, the, is the source of all the problems, they would say. And if people just get away from religion and get away from the Bible and get out of this thousand-year-old book or, you know, 10,000-year-old book, however, what do they say about it, you know, then we'd be better off. So they don't want the medicine. Well, you know what? If they don't want to take the medicine, that's fine. That's their choice if they don't want to take the medicine. They can be like the little kid that doesn't want to take what, what's good for them. But not only that, friends, these are the people that want to, they don't want you to take the medicine either. And they're actually going to tell you that what we are saying when we teach the Bible, that we're actually poisoning. Now, this is what Mr. Serber said, uh, I don't know, I guess it's Monday. Do promote things on here. This is close to what he says here. Yes, sir. Uh, you, heard, you heard last night that James Oldfield's going to have a tent? Yes, yes, he's so going to have that new so tent needing, and I'm going I'm to provide the antidote to the poisoning of the Church of Christ. And I really mean that. I think the Church of Christ poisons people's minds and ruins people's lives. I feel all right, let's do it one more time. On here. You're going to buy another airtime. Yes, sir. Uh, you, heard, you heard last night that James Oldfield's going to have a tent? Yes, yes, he's so going to have that new so tent needing, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to provide the antidote to the poisoning of the Church of Christ, and I really mean that. I think the Church of Christ poisons people's minds and ruins people's lives. I feel All right, so the Church of Christ poisons people's minds. He's going to provide the antidote. So what I'm going to do tonight, friends, is I just want you to consider... What is the atheist's antidote? I mean, what is, what is the atheist's antidote? What is the alternative to the Bible? What is the alternative to, to God's word? What is the alternative to biblical-based morality? What's the alternative? See, this is what I, uh, what I want you to realize. Friends, if you don't have the Bible, then you have to consider what is the alternative. Now, when people tell you that you don't need to listen to the Bible or they're going to give you the antidote for the Bible, again, what they're doing is they're the ones who are refusing, they're the ones who are refusing the medicine that can heal them. You know what? Jesus said the same thing about people in his day. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 15, he says, For this people's heart is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. So, you know, guys like, like Larry and Bob and, and, and whoever else, you know, what they're really doing is they're just kicking and fighting against something that they don't want to conform to because it will force them to admit that they're not the king of their own lives. So, you know, Lord Larry... Lord Lawson, you know, that, that's what they want to be. They want to be God in their own eyes. That's really what it comes down to. So they don't want you to do this. They don't want you to have the Bible. And they want you to stay away from the Bible because they say they have a better antidote. They have a better, a better system. Bob, uh, uh, Bob, I'm sorry, uh, don't tell Bob that I, that I called Larry Bob. Uh, Larry says he's going to provide the antidote. He's going to provide the antidote. Well, friends, what is, what is the atheist antidote? Let's just consider that. What is the atheist antidote? Is it really the best medicine? See, friends, as we said, if you don't have the Bible, then you're going to have to have an alternative. I mean, if the Bible is, is poison, it's not the best medicine, then what is the atheist antidote? What, what would the atheist have us to have? See, what you're going to listen, what you're going to find out, friends, is in in this society, in this world, in the atheist world, their antidote is really not something, it's rather nothing. Here's what I mean by that. When you hear the atheist talk about their antidote, they can paint you a picture of everything how the world's going to be. Oh, it's going to be nice and lovely. It's going to be unicorns and rainbows. I mean, just listen, listen to what, what the atheist says the, the antidote is. And then you, you tell me, what did he really tell you what it is? What, what did he really say? You 
really want to be run, have your world run by this? Johnny made a real funny thing last night about, oh, do you want Larry Serber, the violent cable, cable company killing guy, to run your world? Oh, he broke Brad Hab's jaw by, by punching him, or whatever crazy things he wants you to believe. He said, do you really want to live in Larry's world? Yes, you do want to live in Larry's world because we're going to progress. We're going to be more evolved, more gentle, more tolerant, less racist, less barbaric. We're going to examine life. Wouldn't it be wonderful? John Lennon said, wouldn't it be wonderful if all the people were living for today and there was no heaven, no war? It would be wonderful. Now, he can, he can make all the funny little things about Larry's world he wants to. Let him go. Let him go. All right, so Larry's world is going to be more love. There's going to be more kindness, more gentleness, no war. Boy, you know what? Larry, I, th I think maybe you're still smoking something, my friend. Are you really telling me that all these good things are going to happen in a world with no Bible? I mean, we get rid of the Bible, that's, that's all of a sudden we're going to have this great utopia, this heaven on earth, this paradise on earth, this world where everybody gets along. See, friends, did you hear what he said? He said the, 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 the world, the atheist antidote, is to get rid of the Bible. And I know his world is going to be this, this, great, this great place. But did he tell you how we're going to accomplish that? How are we going to accomplish that? How, how, how are we going to get this world, Larry? See, the atheist antidote is kind of like this. Well... There's a medicine that can make you better. It's just not the Bible. They can't really tell you what it is. They just know that, well, it can't be the Bible. It can't be uh, a God. It can't be a supernatural mind that created the universe and established a sense of right and wrong. That, no, that can't be it. So what is it? Well, it just can't be that. I don't really know what it is. I don't really know how to get there, but I know that we're not taking that road. Friends, would you listen to a doctor that told you you went to the doctor and you had a you had an illness? You know, you've got let's say a severe migraine. And the doctor says, Well, there is a cure for your migraine. And you say, Well, doc, please give it to me. You know, I got a splitting headache. Tell me tell me what the what the remedy is. What's the antidote? Well, it's not aspirin. Okay, well, it's not aspirin, Doc. Well, then what is it? What is the antidote? If it's not aspirin, well, it's just not aspirin. Now, friends, that's what the atheist is saying. The atheist is saying that the way that we're going to have this, this wonderful utopia, this, this world in which there's no war, there's no heaven, no war, just more love, more understanding, you know, we're all going to, sit around the campfire and roast marshmallows and we're all going to hold hands and I guess we won't sing Kumbaya, but, you know, it's just, it's just going to be wonderful. You know, it's going to be, uh, you know, unicorns and rainbows and baby kittens and, you know, fluffy puppies and everything, I guess. But how do we get there? How are we going to accomplish that? Well, it's just not the Bible. That's, that's the atheist's antidote. It's just to say, well, it's just not the Bible. See, they say, well, we can do what's right. We don't need a religious authority to do what's right. Now, this is, this is uh, Christopher Hitchens. Now, he's a former atheist. Mark, did you know he's a former atheist? I say he's a former atheist because he died in December 2011. So I know he's no longer, he no longer uh, thinks that there is no God. But this is what he said about about uh, morals and religion. He wants to separate them. This is what he says. It's talking about, although that's, that's too far now. They've gone too far. They've crossed the line. There's a lot of people that feel that, I think they sometimes put religion and morality as you can't separate the two. You have to separate the two. Right, but, that, but yes. that's part of the reason why a lot of people who, you know, profess Christian values or whatever, they say, well, where else would we get morality from? And that seems to be where a lot of sure. people go to. But that's insulting to you and to me and actually to everyone in this room, the, the yeah. thought that we couldn't do the right thing if we didn't believe in a celestial dictatorship mm -hmm. that would offer us either a horrible punishment or a divine reward. Well, that, you know, we know how to do the right thing, thanks. We know how to do the right thing, thanks. We know how to do the right thing, thanks, without being blackmailed in that way. You know, you always hear... It seems to me what Christians are saying is revealing about themselves. It's as if... All right, he says, 
He says we can do the right things without this, this uh, uh, supernatural dictator talking about God. We can do the right things. We know how to do the right thing. Well, what is the right thing? See, what is the right thing? See, the, the atheist antidote doesn't really tell you what the right thing is. It's just, well, it's just the right thing. It's kind of this, uh, I, I don't know, this mystical, nebulous, you know, uh, uh, fluffy cloud out here. That's just the right thing. We can't really tell you what it is. You know, we just tell you what it's not. Friends, you don't even know what right and wrong is without some kind of standard. What is the right thing? How do you know what is right? How are we going to know what, what is love? How do you know what is, what is treating people right? How are you going to know that? How are you going to know if you're treating your neighbor right? How are you going to know if you're treating your husband, your wife right? How are you going to know if you're treating your children right? I mean, what is right in the atheist world? Friends, you do not want to take the pill that the atheist is offering you. See? You don't want to take the pill that the atheist is offering The atheist is offering you an antidote that really doesn't have any promise of making things better. You know what it is? It's really a placebo. You know what a placebo is? A placebo is a pill the doctor gives you in order to trick your mind. And it doesn't really do anything for you. It's just a sugar pill. It's just something that, that you're taking, and just the fact that you're taking these things is going to convince your mind that, you know what, things are really getting better. That's the atheist antidote. The atheist antidote is just a placebo to make you think things are better when really they're not. Really, there's no way you can know what's right or what's wrong. You can't really, you just convince yourself, well, hey, things are great because... I can do what I want to do. I can go where I want to go. I'm, I'm free. I can make my own choices. But friends, is that really better? Is that really making your life better? Is that really making life better for everybody else? For you to be able to say, well, I don't have any rules or regulations. I'm free of all these strict guidelines. Friends, if there are no guidelines, then there's anarchy. Now, is that, is that the atheist antidote? Friends, when, before we get through discussing this, maybe tonight, maybe not tonight, maybe we'll save it. Because I know Larry's going to tell us the antidote. But friends, I can tell you, if you take the atheist antidote, you swallow that pill, the, the, the Pandora's box of, of vile, base uh, actions will come pouring out. You open the door to, to the atheist world and what you're going to find is you're going to find really there is nothing good or right in that world. All that you're going to find is you're going to find that the atheist world, now according to God's standard, is gratifying your selfish lusts, fulfilling your desires and just doing what you want to do, what's right becomes what is right in your own eyes. Now, see, listen, how do you know, how do you know if, if you're really doing things right? How do you know if you're even getting better? If you take the atheist standard, how, uh, how, how do you know this? Listen to what the atheist antidote, how it's described here. your senses. You've been hypnotized. Your preacher's telling you crazy stuff. Learn real science with real instruments and, and love, learn to love life and love, love learning. Learn to be a stronger, better, more humane person. Learn to be a more decent person so you can feel proud of yourself that you don't cheat people and you, you're moral. You grow every night when you look in the, in the mirror, you're seeing a more moral person, a person that's much more decent. I'm not just talking about growing. You know, some people, I'm not sure about Bob Lawson, but I think maybe he just wants to be an atheist because he can have ten wives or something and cut loose. I want people to get away from the Bible so they can have the one real life that, the, that they've got. Like, All right, now listen, listen again to what he says. He says learn some things. Come to your senses. You've been hypnotized. Your preacher's telling you crazy stuff. Learn real science with real instruments and, 
and love, learn to love life and learn, love learning. Learn to be a stronger, better, more humane person. Learn to be... Learn. Learn to love life. Learn to be a better person. These terms, friends, better, learn, th these are all things that the atheists can't tell you how. How are you going to get that information? Where do you get that information? Where, where, where's the book that tells you how to be a better person? Well, can't tell you what the book is, but it's not the Bible. It's not the Bible. It's not the Bible. Be a more decent person so you can feel proud. Of what is decent? How do you learn how to be a decent person? There's, there's, there's no book that tells you how to be decent, is there? What is the book that tells you how to be decent? Yourself that you don't cheat people and you, you're moral. You grow every night. What is moral? See there? When you ask the atheist what, what, what's moral, what's right, he's going to say, well, subjective morality is, is the best. So you need to learn how to be a moral person by doing what you think is right? When you look in the, in the mirror, you're seeing a more moral person, a person that's much more decent. I'm not just talking about growing. You know, some people, I'm not sure about Bob Lawson, but I think maybe he just wants to be an atheist because he can have ten wives or something and cut loose. I want people to get away from the Bible so they can have the one real life that, that, that they've got. Like I well, what's wrong with having ten wives, Larry? What's wrong with having ten wives? Wouldn't... Wasn't it, uh, you know, weren't you all discussing uh, uh, you wanting to have uh, several women or two women in your, in your house? What's wrong with ten wives? I mean, if, if we're going to take the atheist antidote and we're going to say, you know what, well, what, what brings me pleasure? What brings me, what, what, uh, what I think is right is really the way I'm going to go. Well, why are you saying it's wrong? How can you say anything is wrong? Now, this is the atheist antidote. You take the pill, you take the pill, and you say, you're going to be better. I'm going to be a better person. How are you going to be a better person? Where are you going to learn? Who's going to teach you how to be a better person? Larry? Is he going to teach you how to be a better person? Who, who's going to teach you right and wrong? Who's going to teach you how to be good and moral and upright and standing? Who's going to teach you how to love your neighbor? Where are you going to get that information? And... What's going to be the, the guideline? What's going to be the standard that says, well, this is good and this is bad? Where are you going to draw the line? See, friends, the atheist can't tell you these things. The atheist can only tell you, well, you need to be better, but he can't tell you what better is. He says, well, you need to love more, but he can't really tell you where love comes from. See that? And so the atheist antidote is really not an antidote. The atheist antidote is really... Well, we don't know what it is, but we just know it's not the Bible. You know what I say the atheist antidote really is? The atheist antidote is really like a farm party. Now, a farm party, not, not F-A-R-M, but P-H-A-R-M. Uh, a farm party is where uh, people bring all their drugs, different drugs, right to medicine cabinet, whatever, and they just pour all these drugs, different pills, into a bowl, and then people just reach in and grab one. Don't really know what it is. Maybe I grabbed two or three. I don't know. But it's just, well, it's just a mixed bowl. Just grab, just grab something and, hey, that's what we're going to take. I said that's what the, the atheist antidote really is. Just do what you want to do. Just take something. Just, just take something, grab it, and just see how it turns out. You know, if it makes you feel good, hey, great. If it doesn't, well, don't take that pill again. Is that really the world you want to live in? Is that really one, the world you want to live in? See, friends... In the atheist world, in the atheist world, if you take that pill where you can just grab anything, here's what it turns into. It turns into a society that starts to be consumed with its own lusts, own desires. Now, the Bible would describe that in James chapter 1, verse 13. He would describe that as sin. And no man say I was tempted, I'm tempted to God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he in a man. But every man, when he is tempted, is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And when he lusts, is conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, brings forth death. Now, the atheist would say, well, you know, you, you need to give in to your lust. Give in to your desires. And that's going to make you a better person. You know, if it, it makes you feel good, do it. 
Because you can't say that's wrong. You can't say that's wrong. How do I know that the, that the atheist says, if it makes you feel good, do it? Well, listen, uh, listen to what the atheist says here. Listen to what the atheist says. Is, uh, is what Tiger Woods did, that is having a girlfriend, having a wife and 15 girlfriends or whatever, was, while he's married, was that morally good or, or bad? That was evil. By what standard do you say that? By the standard of treating people like they want to be treated. Like I said, some guy said that a long time ago. Do unto others as we would have them do right. unto you. Tiger did not treat his wife the way he had committed in his marriage vows to treat her. He did not treat her the way he would like to be treated. It was very, very evil for Tiger to treat his okay, wife the but, way he did. But wait a minute. You just said subjective morality standard is superior because it comes from your conscience. Now, if his conscience didn't bother him, why would, obviously it wasn't bothering him. What got said a to bad, bother him was got caught. He got a bad, that's right. The only thing. All right, friend. So. I did the only thing so, bothered him. Well, he's Tiger got, he's got a bad Tiger would conscience. Was evil because he cheated on his and wife. where did the conscience come from if it wasn't given by Almighty God? All the answer I can say is it developed like everything else in evolution very, very slowly over a long, long time. It's, it's, not, it's like that guy but yesterday. But you can't say that, though, Larry, because you just said subjective morality is superior. You can't condemn Tiger for... Sorry about that. I was trying to get another clip going up there. So, so what, what Tiger did was evil, but notice this. Larry is going to say, the atheist antidote, is going to say that, well, pleasure is, what, is whatever is good. Or what, good is whatever brings pleasure. That's what he's going to say. Now, if that's the case, if, if pleasure or if good is whatever brings pleasure, Pleasure. I'm going to see if I can find this here. Uh, here we go. Hopefully. Got a lot going on right here. Um. Yes, absolutely. There is. Let me move out of the way. There's a little delay here. I can't yeah, tell if. Is there a real objective good and evil and right and wrong? Yes, yes. What brings pleasure and health is good. What brings suffering, anguish, agony, fear is, is wrong. It's, it's evil. So yes, it's objective in the sense that it exists in the, in the world of humans. We shouldn't do things that cause people to suffer. Whether you've got a God or, or not, in my opinion, all right, so what brings pleasure is good. Now, what if Tiger Woods got pleasure out of cheating on his wife? See that? What if Tiger Woods got pleasure out of cheating on his wife? Now, was that good or was that evil? Well, it was evil because it made his wife feel bad, but it was good because hey, it made him feel good. See that? So is that really the, the standard that we're going by? I mean, is, which is it, good or bad, good or evil? The atheist antidote really can't tell you. You're on the word of the Lord. Yeah, hey, how you doing? I'm doing well. Hey, yeah, I, I listen. I be listening to the atheists, and, and I listen to the uh, 
Turn turn your TV down. All right. Yeah, I listen to to the atheist opinion, and I listen to, to the. But this this is a point that I I I I, I do sincerely want that they, they, they put across is this. Look, if you look into this world with your focus and your sense, but all things carry eyes, and all things carry ability, and all things carry emotions and feelings and, 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 and ability and, 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 and the circumstances of living. All right, so when you look into this and, and, and you realize one thing, the goodness of life has always been the come out of the word of God. God has always been the goodness of life in, in general. And, and what I'm saying, nonsense. It, it, this is like a nonsense process because it, it's like you gambling. You're saying that don't nothing exist. And, and, and you putting God below the, the, the existence that we all know about, we all witness, and we all, and who really trusts anybody? No one really trusts okay. uh, a, a preacher but, saying that I'm, 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 I'm this and I'm that, or a woman saying that I'm this and I'm that. But we do trust one thing, and that's reality, that's purity, that's maturity. We all trust that. We all trust what we really have witnessed in life. But, so so but, the business of politics and religion should be only survival and should be okay. maturity. Okay. To be but, based on all right, maturity. All right, all right, all right, hang know. on a second. Hold on, stop. Now what we don't know. Take a breath. Take a breath. So what would you say then to the atheist who says we just need to get rid of God? You said good things come from God. So what are you going to say to the to the man who says let we need to get well, God out of our lives? Well, what the logic of the logic of of, of, of this if, if you take the good things out of life if you take the order out of life, if you take the understanding out of life, you take the intelligence out of life, you take the peace out of life, you take the comfort out of life, then you're going back to a time when people used to just walk around and they, 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 they define a, a, a colony and they, they step across the colony, they kill the men and they take the okay. women and the children and they rape them. Right. And they do what they want to do to right. them. Okay, you will you go right back there if you take the God out of life. You, if you okay. take the intelligence, if you take the okay. order, you take the maturity, you take the purity, you take the reality out of life. Okay. The shit. All right, you all right, all right. You made your point. You, you, point. you made your point. And all then right. you have no, no, okay. no control. Okay, thank you. You made your point. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, I say you made point. <clears throat> the you, you when you do take God out of this, then there is no. There is no line that, that says, well, you've crossed the line and gone into evil because the, the lines are blurred between good and evil if there is no, no standard. Now, I know the atheist doesn't like that. The atheist want to take that placebo. They want to take that, that, their antidote and get rid of God, and that gets rid of all the lines. So how do, how do you get rid of evil? See, what is evil? You can't define evil. When you take away, when you take away that standard of right and wrong. Now, friends... Let me tell you, the, the, the atheist antidote, when you take that pill, when you take the atheist antidote, like I said, it's going to take you down roads. It'll take you down roads of, of the idea of pleasure that really are only going to cause pain. You know, I wonder, and maybe, maybe Larry will answer this when he, when he uh, uh, does his program Sunday, but I wonder why, why did Larry stop doing all the drugs? Did that not bring him pleasure? Now, I don't know, he still may do, maybe he still does hard drugs. I don't know. But it seemed like he told me one time that, you know, he, do, he, doesn't, he quit doing the hard drugs. He was a hippie, he, you know. And, but why did you stop doing that, Larry? Didn't that bring you pleasure? Didn't it bring you some sense of gratification? Or was there some downside to it? See? Just because it was pleasurable does not mean it was really good. So, friends, the, the, the standard of pleasure is what's good. That's, that's wrong. Some people get pleasure out of, out of mistreating others. I mean, I heard uh, Dick Jansen say uh, on the program that's, that's uh, I guess it's going now, maybe in Martinsville or something, I don't know, but he, you know, he got a little pleasure out of mistreating people, uh, bullying them in, in school. Now, I know he said, you know, he said, I, I kind of regret that later on. And, and, but even, even Larry said that, you know, I Got a little pleasure. Well, pleasure's good, I thought. So how can something be not good and still be pleasurable? See? And so, friends, when you, when you start blurring the lines, you take away God out of it, then, then you lose all concept of what's right and wrong. And Larry, our atheist friends, have, 
have taken this, this pill and what it's caused them to do is then focus on, well, it's all about me. It's all about me. You know what? Uh, when, you, when you start thinking about uh, the atheist world and what, what pleasures uh, can be found in the atheist world when you take the atheist antidote, you know what? Peter's going to say that uh, individuals that, that give themselves over to that sort of, of, of lifestyle, if you will, Notice this, in 2 Peter chapter uh, 2 and verse 14, I submit to you this is what the, uh, the atheist antidote will result in. 2 Peter 2, and we're going to start in verse uh, 12. But these as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not. Now there's, there's the atheist. And shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to ride in the daytime, spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with, the, with their own de deceivings while they, while they feast with you having their eyes full of, iniqui of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and hearts they have exercised with covetous practice, cursed children. Now, eyes full of adultery, you know what? I believe, and, and our, there's no belief to it, I know this. We're going to demonstrate, friends, that the atheist antidote will result in this. Eyes full of adultery. And the things, that, the things that we can show, the things that our, our friends who have taken the atheist antidote, you know, the things that they engage in, the things that they would do, it, it would make um, sailors blush with shame. And we're going to show that. Because, you know, I, I, have, I have a clip where Larry said he wants to be accountable for what he says. Well... We're going to hold him accountable for what he says. Well, that's what we're going to do in the, in the upcoming days and weeks during the, during the tent meeting. You're on the word from the Lord. Hello. I'm calling about an atheist. Okay. When I was a boy in the 50s, this guy talked just like Eric Lord does, and he was dying and he called all his children in, and my daddy was a friend of his, and my daddy went. And just before he died, he went to tell them what a pretty place he seen. He couldn't describe it. It was so beautiful. And he died trying to describe it. And my daddy said he believed God showed him heaven because he didn't believe. Said he didn't know whether the man repented or not, but said he knew God showed him heaven, and it made all his children Christians. Hmm. And I just thought Larry Servant ought to know about that. Well, that man well, died talking about him. Well, I don't know that, I, there's no way to prove that was heaven. And number one, number two, when Paul saw heaven, he wasn't allowed to talk about it. So I don't think that that, what that man described heaven. But well, he, he was trying to. Well, it may it might have been just the uh, the the strong delusion that was sent to him because he knew that he hadn't been he hadn't been obedient to God and so he's trying to convince himself that he's going to go in a better place. I don't know, but I know this: the Bible says those well, but the Bible says those that disobey God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ that they're going to be destroyed with everlasting uh, fire. So my, my daddy thought he might have not have went. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll take the Bible. The Bible says, if you don't do the will of the Father, Matthew uh, 7, 21, he that doeth the will of my Father, uh, that's what we're talking about. So those that disobey God uh, are going to be destroyed. I, I, I wouldn't say that someone went who had been disobedient to God. Would you? But daddy didn't think he did. He just said he believed God showed him. 
Okay. All right. Well. He knew it before he died. Well, maybe so. But, I mean, I, I, I don't think that's what the Bible would teach us uh, as far as he being able to. Nothing. He just believed that God showed him it was. Okay. That's all I got to say. Okay. I don't know. All right. Thanks for, thanks for your story. You're on the word from the Lord. Yeah, hi, James. I just wanted to make a comment. You were talking about standard earlier. You know, what standard is What standard are we following? And, I mean, today we had a 17-year-old shoot his mother in the head. And, you know, didn't he know from the age of three, you don't shoot your mother? I mean, what standards do we have anymore? Yeah. Well, you know, but like I said, if, if, we, if we could just get rid of the Bible, you know, we would have less of that going on. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. which, you know, I'm saying that facetiously. I, I hate to hear that. But, uh, you know, I just, uh, I, I don't know. That's why I'm saying we need more We need more Bible because obviously we're getting away from, from God's Word and God's standard. And that's what we're trying to promote here with on our TV programs and tent meetings. And, you know, I wish people could realize that the, the true antidote is not, is not the atheist antidote. The, the true... The, Go ahead. And that that's all we're trying to do. That's right. That's right. Okay. All right. Talk to you later. Right. Thank Thanks you. For, thanks for calling. Yeah, friends, the real antidote, the real antidote is not the, the atheist antidote. The real antidote is um, the gospel, the gospel. And that's what we're trying to make available to everyone so that they can, they can uh, know the, the abundant life that comes from uh, following God. You're on the word from the Lord. Yes, sir. In the Church of Christ, uh, James, have you ever heard of anyone tell that that they die for a little while and come back and seen heaven or hell? Mm, not, not the not no one that I know. Right. Okay. Well, I just wondered because I've seen a show it was called Praise the Lord. Uh, it was called Praise the Lord. Um, I'm not sure what doctrine they believe. I think it's. The Pentecostal, but a man yeah, yeah. got on there and he spoke that he died for 23 minutes and he went to hell. And so I just wonder if that was an illusion or... He went to hell? Did you say he went to hell? He, went, he claimed he went to hell for 23 minutes of death and, and he come back and he wrote a book about it called 23 Minutes well, that, Hell. That's the first time I've ever heard of that. Most people go to heaven, don't they? When you when you hear the stories, don't you always hear about somebody going to heaven? Not always. When people uh, uh, are not saved, they tell a story of where they died and go to hell and come back. And that's something I don't understand. Why would God give a person a chance to see what it is? Yeah. And well, other people don't have that chance. Right. Uh, the Seven Hundred Club. They mentioned one time that they known people to well, go to hell and some went to heaven and and they come back and told about it. So I, yeah. I just think it's interesting. Well, yeah, well, I, I just know that uh, the Apostle Paul said he went, to, he went to heaven and he wasn't able to talk about it. So when someone tells me that they went to heaven and they, they're telling me all about it, well, if why, why do they get to tell about it and, and Paul didn't, you know? Right. Oh, so, Paul didn't get to tell about it. Does it, does it, does it say that in the scriptures, uh, James? Yeah, yeah. It's um. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you think it's just Second Corinthians twelve? Is I'm, if I'm thinking right, yeah. Second Corinthians twelve too is what I was looking for. We're about running out of time. I want I'll put this up here. Okay. Second Corinthians twelve, in verse. Uh, Two, Paul says, I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, whether out of the body, I cannot tell. Uh, God knoweth, for such a one was caught up to the third heaven, and, uh, uh, and I knew such a man, uh, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, how that he was caught up in, into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. And so... Uh, 
you know, he was caught up into heaven, the, th the uh, paradise, the third heaven, and, and he wasn't able to talk about it. So uh, I don't know why anybody else would too. But friends, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting the, the wrap-up sign. But friends, here's what I want you to think about. Uh, as I said before, we can, uh, we can demonstrate the, the, the vileness, the, the baseness, if you will, the lowest, uh, the lowest, light, the lowest form of, uh, of debauchery, if you will, that comes from the atheist lifestyle, you know, the, taking the atheist antidote. And Larry said, you know, he wants, he wants to be accountable for his words, and I, uh, you know, I, I appreciate that, and I sure I want to uh, definitely accommodate him on that. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to just let you hear some of his words, uh, what he says, and I, I feel confident that, you know, he doesn't even know what he said, doesn't remember what he said. I know he doesn't because he denied saying some of these things. But yet, friends, this is what we're, what we're talking about. The Bible is a standard that will teach you to guard your mouth. The Bible has a standard that says, you know what? You're going to be judged by every mouth, word that proceeds out of your mouth. Now, I don't know that the atheist antidote, you know, really offers that. But we're going to show you these. We're going to show you these things. And so, uh, you know, and like I said, uh, Larry has been getting upset about some of the things that have been said on other programs. Uh, people saying, well, Larry said this or Larry said that, and he gets upset about it. But, you know, maybe, maybe if he's upset about the things that people have said he said, I wonder how he's going to feel about the things that he really did say. And what you're going to see, you know, if you take the atheist antidote, this is what's, what's going to happen. Anything goes, even the most basic uh, actions, I'd say, known to man would have to, would have to be okay in the atheist world. So it's not all fluffy kittens and unicorns if you take the atheist pill. Friends, I want to remind you of our tent meeting come up September 16th. Through the 27th, 7 p.m. each night. I want you to come out and be, be with us. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, seeing you there. Till next time, remember to ask, what does the Bible say? You'll always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Don't flex your muscles. Flex your mind. Watch a word from the Lord, Thursday nights at 9. I did it for science. Real Local, WGSR 47.1 in high definition. And hi, everybody. Welcome to the Thursday edition of Star News on WGSR 47.1 in Reedsville.